Hello everyone and welcome to a week of Linux news for the 11th of June 2017. I'm back home in the United Kingdom now after having a nice break in America. Uh, well it was more a training course really but uh, yeah. Learned a few more things about security like how utterly useless antivirus checkers are. Oh, no, I knew that one already but yeah they really are severely flawed but that would be a story for another day. The Conservative Party won the general election in the United Kingdom. Wait a minute, is one the correct word? Mm -hmm. Didn't do as well as they anticipated, that's for sure, because they failed to get a majority. In fact, they lost seats. So what have we got in store on the tech side of things? Well, to be honest, it couldn't be in a worse manifesto if they tried. The broadband should be easier to switch networks. Yeah, it's boring. Improvements on the 5G network. Well, it would be nice if they got the 3G network perfect first. 4G would be nicer. Do we need 5G? Yeah, 4G is pretty fast. Cybercrime and terrorism. It's kind of difficult to get some decent information about it, but some of the articles I've seen state that they'll be disabling encryption in messaging services but on the guise of preventing terrorism. Hmm. Not that terrorists are being taught in other places like, oh, I don't know, prison, mosques. Social media and safety, yes. Think of the children. Lib Dem policies. Just want to read one item here. Cybercrime and terrorism. The Lib Dems oppose conservative attempts to undermine encryption. And in the actual manifesto, there's one page here about protecting the children. We will work with industry to introduce new protection for minors from images of pornography, violence and other age inappropriate content, not just on social media, but in app stores and content sites as well. We will put a responsibility on industry not to direct users any users, even unintentionally, to hate speech, pornography, and other sources of harm. So, no porn for anyone then. Anyway, onwards with the Linux news. So Linux malware enslaves Raspberry Pi to mine cryptocurrency. So is this an exploit of Linux? No. Is it an exploit of user stupidity? Yes, it is. So someone has developed a simple Linux Trojan designed to harness the meager power of Raspberry Pis to mine cryptocurrency. Really? Couldn't you have found any other devices to exploit? Well, no, the exploit is going after the password, the default password for Raspbian, which is Pi and Raspberry. Not an exploit against Linux, just exploiting default passwords. A Raspbian OS update released last year turned off SSH by default and forced users to change the default password. Good. Some responsibility taken by the distro creator. You would have to enable SSH through the firewall. Why are people doing that? Why are they going to the effort to do that, but not going to the effort of changing the username and password? Hmm. Now that, I don't know. So although it will take a Raspberry Pi a long time to mine any sort of cryptocurrency, the fact that the CPU and energy being used by the Pi is not being paid for by the person taking the cryptocurrency makes it a feasible option, really. Even if it's slow, it's not their cost. The blog post update on Lubuntu. There was just one item I wanted to focus on in this blog post, about the LXQt that there is now a Lubuntu Next daily ISO with the LXQ desktop. At last! God, how long has this taken? How many years have we heard about Lubuntu moving to LXQ? And now it looks like it's finally happening. Well, let's not get too excited. This is only an alternate ISO. This is not the confirmation that we will be seeing LXQ in the Lubuntu 17.10 release. KDE Plasma 5.12 will be a long-term support release and is scheduled to be supported for at least two years. So that means there'll be two Plasma desktops on long-term support release. So I wonder how much longer the 5.8 will be supported for. I suppose that's probably got um, under a year left. Well, maybe it won't be a huge crossover in that case. Fair play to the KDE developers in supporting the Plasma desktop for this long, really, and this many different options the long-term support, and the more bleeding edge. The first point release to the Plasma 5.10 desktop has been released. Nothing too major really, it's just, a, it's just a couple of bug fixes and translation updates. Although when I tried it on my own system recently, um, I was having problems with the application theming, which all of a sudden were rectified 
with the update. So that's good. And Plasma 5.10.1 is now available in the Kubuntu Zesty 1704 backport repository. Kubuntu was a bit of a crossover really, it did retain some features from Plasma 5.10 but was actually the Plasma 5.9.4 desktop I believe it was. You can have a little bit of an update if you add the backports repository and you've got the instructions here in this article. From the Hacker News, some more information about the SambaCry exploit, which uh, came out a couple of weeks or so ago. It's supposed to be like WannaCry in that it's a worm-based attack. Up until recently, it has been very rare to see such an aggressive worm-based attacks on the internet, and I think that's what has caught quite a few people out, really. So anyway, it has not been anywhere near as, as successful as WannaCry, and even then WannaCry was debatably not that successful really. It, uh, the encryption would not work in all versions of Windows, and even then the decryption was a bit hit and miss. Anyway, all that aside, the Linux variant earned 98XMR, don't know what the acronym stands for, but that is Monero crypto coin currency, and that is worth about 5,300 US dollars. Wow, that is pathetic. So does that mean there are not many Samba boxes exploitable? Or perhaps the computers being infected could not supply the resource requirements to mine cryptocurrency? So yeah, the patch has already been released. It's just interesting to see how pathetic that was, really. Canonical have made some more improvements to the older long-term support release of Ubuntu 1404. They are now offering the live patch kernel service. Fair play to Canonical bringing out new features for a three-year-old operating system. So there's some instructions on how to install the live patching service and that you require Snappy, which has also been a recent addition to 14.04. So yeah, it doesn't look too difficult to do. It's not something I've really looked into, so, but I just thought I would mention this fact that the improvements are happening to the older version of Ubuntu. A small update on Ubuntu Touch and Plasma Mobile that both are running on the Halium, that is a hardware abstraction layer. I just thought it was an interesting picture there that you've got both Plasma Mobile and the new Ubuntu Touch running on the same base. So as it stated in the article, more work is needed before it's anywhere near stable. And finally, for this week's stupid news, man charged with drunk driving found sleeping at a police department. <laughs> well, more like the parking lot of the Plainstow police station. Coulter told NBC Boston he had been drinking and realised he needed to get off the road. He said the only place in sight at the time was the station, so he pulled in and put his Jeep Grand Cherokee in park. Unfortunately, he left the key in the ignition and the vehicle running, and was therefore charged with driving under the influence. He probably would have got away with it had he just been asleep in the vehicle, with the key out of the ignition. That was a week of Linux news, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.